Mm -mm. That is a good coffee. Or as Kev would say it, coffee. Because I drink decaffeinated coffee mostly. Or, and I only have about half a teaspoon, half a flat teaspoon of coffee. So he's like, that's not coffee. <laughs> it's just coffee flavoured water. <laughs> or coffee flavoured milk. Because I have it really milky. Good morning, you guys. It's Carol. Can you hear that? Last time I said that on camera, you couldn't hear it, but it's... My light is crackling. <laughs> it's freaking me out. It's like it's going to explode and I'm going to scream just to let, just let you know. Good morning, you guys. It's Karen and I'm here to talk about Watson and how we have healed slash treated slash managed Watson's inflammatory bowel disease. I hesitate to say healed because everybody has told me that there will be flare-ups and that this isn't unusual. So it's something that we will be managing until the end of his life. Um, but we did not expect to see such a miraculous recovery, if you like, um, just now so quickly and neither did the vet we were at the vet yesterday and she had been on holiday for a couple of weeks and she she knew about his um diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease i'll tell you how it all came about and, and the history etc and everything we tried and what finally worked but she was just she said to me yesterday i cannot believe how healthy he, he is i did not expect this to happen i expected him to be in and out of flare-ups and have a few good days and a few bad days but he for three and a half weeks now has had no diarrhea which is just unheard of for Watson apart from a, f a few periods of time over the last because he's nearly six now um, but for the last probably year year and a half that's a long time to go without having diarrhea and he's only had one episode possibly two of vomiting but it's been he's eaten some grass he's thrown up the grass we've given him a serenia and then he's been perfectly fine it's not come back again the next day he's eaten his food no problem it's all been fine so i'm cautiously optimistic that we have found the right thing for him the problem will be if he gets any kind of sensitivity or reaction to the current food he's on i don't know where we will go next or if he gets another bacterial infection which is what has really thrown things off in the past when we've we've got him to a point of being managed so just to give you a brief history of his what we now know is inflammatory bowel disease from um we had him from a puppy so we got him at nine weeks i think he was nine and a half weeks and he almost immediately had constant diarrhea and it was also bloody diarrhea and so we were back and forward to the vets a lot but what happened within I think two weeks of having him is he swallowed a piece of slate and it was a, a quite a sizable piece of slate um he he actually pooped it out i do not understand how that came out of his little body honestly when i saw it on the floor i was like how can you have passed that no wonder you're bleeding and so the thinking is that he could have damaged his in insides at that time you know and there will be some scarring there which can be a cause of, of inflammatory bowel disease but it can also be an unknown cause just one of those things but it is the thinking is that that has probably exacerbated his whole life so for one year we went to the vet um, backwards and forwards had numerous tests and um, tried all the the um prescription foods and lots of different prescription foods and we tried fiber fiber pellets and fiber powder and all sorts of things and nothing ever worked and actually this was just before our vet practice was sold to what is now a really young team but it was actually three elderly gentlemen that were just about to retire and the last um, time I went in after that year of this bloody diarrhea every day he said it's now up to you. He said, we've done all of the tests we can. You just need to go away and find a food that works for him. So I remember feeling really defle defeated and deflated and didn't know what to do. And we'd had a lot of people telling us to try raw. We weren't really keen on that because I'm not exactly vegetarian, but I have been vegetarian in my life. I don't generally handle meat. I handle it more now than I ever did. But it's something that I'm not keen on. I don't like even touching raw meat, you know. So 
but we thought we've tried everything else we've tried every dry food we've tried every wet food he's also an extremely fussy dog so there's not much food that he actually loves and um, you know some of the food we were buying he wouldn't even eat it so we we said let's try raw let's give it a try you know there's stuff for puppies because i had this little you know it was a year at the time but they had this puppy chunks of raw food and we said let's give it a try well he was healed overnight overnight he he had perfect poops no blood and he was absolutely fine and at this time he wasn't going off his food or anything like that it was just really the diarrhea he wasn't vomiting so that was all solved for an amount of time i can't remember how long but we went on to the adult stuff he was probably on it for about a year these numbers might not all add up because unless I sat and looked, you know went through my spreadsheet with you, I can't exactly remember. And I didn't always fill the spreadsheet in because at that point we were like, oh, that's it. We've we've solved the problem. You know, it's all fine. What then happened was he got Campylobacter poisoning, and Campylobacter poisoning is something that a lot of um, people, including the vets, were like, oh, well, it's probably because he's on raw food. But we then discovered that actually it was because he had drunk stale water. Um, and, and the food that we give him, the raw food we give him, we don't actually give him any chicken or any turkey because those are the biggest risks for bacteria. And so he had only been having duck, venison and beef. And these are foods that, you know, humans can eat raw and that there isn't as much bacteria, isn't as much risk as from chicken and turkey. And I was really scrupulous with, you know, the health and hygiene aspect and wiping his muzzle afterwards and all the rest of it. So we got this Campylobacter poisoning from drinking from a water from a puddle and he was so ill for he didn't eat a bean not a thing for like six weeks he lost i think he lost two kilos um he was very very poorly he was on special we had to get this special liquid that had nutrients in it and like i had to syringe it into him and it was just awful um but eventually they found out what it was I had to keep on taking stool samples in and they found out what it was he got antibiotics and he was fine they'd given him antibiotics at the beginning thinking it was giardia and it wasn't so the problem was when he when he got better he started eating again he didn't want to eat his raw food i don't know whether he had associated that food with being ill but he just wouldn't eat it so we had to find something else so we moved on to an, a similar type of food i think it was even by the same brand but it was called true instinct and it was still little nuggets and we were like right brilliant that's it we've solved it again if you like then he went off that and we put him on to bella and duke and this is this probably spans three or four years because he's had so many illnesses and so much bad luck from he's had a broken tail he's had a a tumor a cancerous tumor so he's had an operation for that he's had um a lump removed from his back he's had folliculitis on his hip he's got a lot of allergies and he has a lot of ear infections and he gets cysts between his pores there's a lot of things that have kind of gone wrong with him if you like and what we did learn over these years were the things that flare him up so if he snaffles anything that, that we don't know what it is that can upset his tummy we have to be really vigilant about that if he has anesthetic general anesthetic and even sedation upsets his tummy and we always knew that so and these were things that took him a long time to get over so whilst he was getting over the campylobacter it took a long long time to get him back to normal and to find a food that worked but we eventually found this bella and duke um, raw food in tubs and we were like that's brilliant that's him sorted again and then um and this was a year and a half ago I think he got gastro hemorrhagic gastroenteritis so basically another bug of an unidentified source of the bacteria but it was just an infection that was going around nobody knew what it was from all of the dogs in Edinburgh had it all of the vets were packed um, he had to go into hospital and be given um, a drip etc and uh, that was just another setback if you like but we thought that we could um, probably get him back onto the Bella and Duke and he'd be fine. But but again, when he started to recover, he didn't want to eat the Bella and Duke food. Again, we wonder if maybe he associated with that, with how he was feeling. And since then, he's also started, he also started being sick regularly or grass eating and feeling sick and not eating his food. And so that's been, like I said, at least a year and a half. I think he, he, he'd occasionally be feeling sick and not eating before that so probably two years at least this has been going on and so we've been having all sorts of tests at the vets he's been tested for addison's he's been tested for cushing's he's been tested for thyroid problems he's had ultrasounds x-rays all sorts of things gone on and obviously in that time he's also had an operation to remove the tumor under his arm um 
so it's been a tough time because he's he, he goes with a, a dog walker and even the dog walker would say oh no he was fine today but it's not until now that he's better she's like oh my goodness he's a different dog because he would just sort of he was lethargic a lot of the time he wasn't loving life you know um and every day for me was a worry like is he going to eat what can i get him to eat if he doesn't eat this so for the past year and a half after the gastro the hemorrhagic gastroenteritis so basically he was vomiting blood and he was pooping blood and it was really serious we couldn't find anything for him to eat. I was trying lots and lots of different kibbles. Um, and there were some kibbles that he would eat. We were trying Hills, a lot of Hills food, Hills DD, Hills ID, um, which is a digestive type of kibble. And he would eat all of these, but they weren't, he was still having diarrhea, he was still having vomiting. And like I said, we were going through all of these tests. We went, we drove out a couple of hours to a place that actually has a big section. It's in Perth and it's called Vodabone and you can go and buy whatever raw food you like like they've got a big freezer section literally rows and rows of it um and we we just got a tub of all these different ones to try for him and he wouldn't eat any of them and it was just a nightmare um so we went through all these tests and and eventually it was decided that what he needed to have was an endoscopy he needed a camera down and up to check what was going on inside and get an actual diagnosis and find out what what it was we tried steroids as well that was something else and that didn't do anything. So he was due to have this endoscopy um, in March. But then of course lockdown happened. And so we had to wait for the whole of lockdown only getting emergency treatment. And we were in and out of the vets the whole time because he was, he was vomiting blood again. He was pooping blood. It was just, it has been absolutely awful. But eventually he got his endoscopy. He had that, was it last month? yeah it was bef was it before dad died i can't actually remember now but anyway he had his endoscopy and it confirmed that he had inflammatory bowel disease which by the way is completely different to irritable bowel syndrome some people call it irritable bowel syndrome but it's not it's inflammatory bowel disorder and it's unrelated to irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disorder is not affected by stress and um, that's something that I learned from my research and also confirmed by the vet specialist. He had his operation in the vet hospital in Edinburgh so it's the Royal Dick School um, so it's it's very world renowned you know and they're absolutely brilliant there it wasn't with our local vet because they don't have an endoscopy they don't have the right equipment and they're specialists in this internal medicine is where we went to we already had experience there because that's where the cancer center is so they were absolutely amazing um, but I was really disheartened when I got him back because he was he was in there for two days and he couldn't he wasn't allowed to eat three days before it was just a horrible time but when he we got him back he was just in still in the middle of a flare-up and really all they gave us was these probiotics a probiotic powder that you kept in the fridge and you sprinkled on his food and we got specialist food now we'd actually finally got him onto some kibble two types of kibble hills that d kibble and hills that d wet food and we got this and he would eat it and it was like the hypoallergenic type of stuff and so he wasn't doing too badly on that in terms of he would eat it you know although i was still worried every day what if he doesn't eat it what am i going to give him you know and um, occasionally i would cook him stuff and his tummy didn't seem too bad on home cooked food but we got him back and it, there wasn't anything different other than this probiotic and I just was like, you know, he's crying at night. I mean, his symptoms were by now, he was vomiting every other day. He was pooping blood. He was crying at night like he was in pain, like he had cramps and in his tummy. And I just felt like, you know, you've given him back to me and all I've got are probiotics. It just didn't, probiotics and, and specialist food. So the specialist food we put him on was Royal Cannon anal Analogenic. I can't ever say that word, but it's, like one above even hypoallergenic food it's one that absolutely they can't be allergic to and thankfully he would eat it so we put him onto that and I, I got these um a month's worth of these probiotic powders now I had already tried pro probiotics for Watson called symbiotic DC and I tried lots of other powders and all that kind of thing you know they'd never done anything but I thought you know I'm going to give it a go but I asked about pain relief I had a big conversation about pain relief um it was annoying that I had to ask to be fair and they were a bit like you know well we need to get 
the solution to his problem and then he won't be in pain. I was like, I understand that, but he's currently in pain. I don't want to see him in pain. You wouldn't leave a human in pain and go, well, I'm, you know, in a month or so when we figure it out, you'd be fine. You'd give them pain relief. Um, so he can't have meloxicam or metacam, which is what dogs are normally given as an anti-inflammatory, but that just messes his stomach up. It's another one of those things we found he was sensitive to. Um, so we were allowed to give him paracetamol and we were also given and still have, haven't given him any a gabapentin. I think gabapentin is just, it's a really unusual drug. Certainly in humans, it's something I've, I know a lot about from when I worked in medical research, there were a lot of studies on it and also personal experience from my dad taking it from a good friend of mine. Her husband was on it, had very bad experience. My brother is on it because he's epileptic. It's an epilepsy drug, but it also works on nerve pain. Um, so I wasn't keen on giving him, him that, but I would have done had he not improved with the paracetamol I was giving him. He could have also had some codeine. Um, and so we started giving him these probiotics. I was giving him paracetamol to make sure he wasn't crying at night. He, the crying definitely calmed down when I was giving him the paracetamol, so that helped. Um, he would get a half of a 500 milligram tablet. You have to work out exactly what dose per kilogram. But actually that is the first thing that worked for him, the, the probiotic powder and the Royal Canon Anallergelic Food, which is actually made from feathers, which my husband was furious about when he read it. He was like, I can't believe we're paying this amount of money for something that is made from a byproduct. <laughs> but that food and that probiotic powder stopped the diarrhea. It was very slow and it was a very slow recovery for that month. It was a month after he had his endoscopy, um, but but it was enough, you know, we, I was happy with that. He stopped being sick every other day, but we also had Serenia, which is an anti-sickness tablet that we could give him if he was nauseous to make sure that he still ate and to obviously stop him feeling sick. Um, but that never got him, it got him so far, it never got him to back to being full of energy. Um, it never got him to having firm poops. They were soft, n not always fully formed. It just wasn't diarrhea. So we were like, okay, well, this is the point we're at. This is as good as it's gonna get because he's now been a month on this probiotic powder and he's on this food for a month as well and no other treats. The only things I was giving him were I would bake wet food, the hypoallergenic wet food, I would bake that and he loved those as treats. Um, so again, we had a discussion with the vet school and what they said the next course of treatment was, was to give him something called cyclosporin. Cyclosporin is a real, um, heavy duty drug. It's an anti-rejection drug used in, in humans actually for when they have um, an organ transplant, but it's a heavy duty drug and dogs suffer for the first one or two weeks with a lot of sickness and diarrhea, ironically, which is the very thing we're trying to, to solve. Um, one good thing would have been that it would, it would have helped with his allergies, which he suffers with quite badly as well. And I'm gonna do another video on how we've managed his allergies because we've now, this is as healthy as he's ever been. He's currently, he'll be six in November, um, and this is the healthiest he's ever been. And regarding his temperament and how energetic he would be, we weren't really sure what his true character was, because like I said, he's had so many health issues and things to overcome, that sometimes we thought maybe he was hyperactive when he was in pain. Um, we just weren't sure what type of dog he was because we felt he'd never had the chance to just enjoy life. There was always something going on, you know. So anyway, Kevin and I sat and discussed it and neither of us were keen on the cyclosporin. We didn't want to go back on steroids. That was another option. Um, the final option would be, <laughs> some of you will have heard of this, some of you won't, but it's called a microbiome transplant, which is basically where they put healthy poop from another dog. They put it into what they call a milkshake and then they put it into Watson and leave it there. And then that can sometimes help. Um, but that's another big operation done on a, under general anaesthetic. Um, and they will only do that because it's so novel, this research for this. They will only do that after he's been on a course of cyclosporin. So we said, leave it with us. Let's see how he is over the next couple of weeks. And we'll decide if we want to put him on this cyclosporin or not. And I said to Kev during that time, should we try raw food again? I said, you know, the vet, both the vet school and my local vet had said that raw food would work for Watson because it's limited ingredients and it doesn't have like preservatives and all of those things. And any one of those things could be an allergen for Watson. 
the problem was we tried everything from the shops. We tried so many things and he wouldn't eat anything. And so I said, I'm gonna try one more and it's called Honeys. And I contacted them a couple of years ago. We were gonna try them. Um, they were really, really helpful, but I didn't know whether Watson would like it. So I ordered a taster pack from them and he just loved it. So I ordered a big proper batch and started giving it to him. That was three weeks ago. And overnight it was just like a miracle. Honestly, raw food has now been a miracle for us three times. Um, different types though he likes it. He's gone off the particular brands. Um, and there's obviously a specific, even though there's limited, ingred limited ingredients, he can obviously tell the difference, you know, because we've tried those brands again and he's still like, nope, not interested, even though he used to eat it two or three years ago. But he's loving Honey's food. He's having beef, um, pork, lean pork. It's the lean range we're using. So it's lean beef, lean pork, lean lamb and lean duck. And it, we've tried each of those foods and each of them he's absolutely fine on. His, his poop is firm all the time and he and you know the walker has said he's like a different dog he is running around playing with all the other dogs we've always described Watson as a dog that doesn't like other dogs that isn't that interested in playing but as suspected he's basically just been ill all of his life and that's why he's not been interested in playing um Zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> he does zoomies now which he occasionally used to do which i guess he only did if he was feeling okay you know run around in circles he's he's just loving life just now and it's all down to this raw food and what we say is that the Sivo mix probiotic well, that's the one that i had to put in the fridge i will link it for you um i got it from a company called nat prod you have to order it online you can't even get it from i probably could have got it from the vet school but um, i couldn't get it from my local vet that and the royal cannon hypoallergenic food or anallergenic food got him to a certain amount that helped him stop having diarrhea but the raw food has been what's been the real difference with the firm poop with the energy levels with him just sleeping better he doesn't wake up crying in the night um everything and there's many other things that the raw food has done that i'll talk about in the allergies video but like he doesn't have waxy ears anymore which i was cleaning them twice a day they i haven't touched them for a week other than to look at them and see if they need anything doing and put cleaner in and nothing comes out so it's a complete turnaround and it's down to raw food and although it's honey's honey's is the brand that we're using i think if you have never tried raw food before go for any brand and I think what I was saying was that the vets have said raw food will work because it has limited ingredients the reason that vets are often against it and that my local vet explained it to me again yesterday she said it's because not everybody would be willing to commit to the hygiene required to make sure that they don't there's no bacteria and that they don't get a bacterial infection because that as we know and as we've seen can really set you back in terms of inflammatory bowel disease his tummy is very very sensitive and so getting a bacterial infection could kill him you know so there is a slight risk with us giving him this food but i you know obviously wash your hands constantly the way you would with any raw meat but i either put it in a bowl and if he looks like he's going to eat it all in a one or i'll let him but he's still a fussy eater so sometimes i spoon feed it to him which the vet has said is you know something that they would recommend but that again not many people would be prepared to do but that means it doesn't get on his muzzle then afterwards i wipe him with a clx wipe i wipe his whole muzzle to make sure that there's you know no raw food left on it if in between eating his dinner he goes and plays with a toy a soft toy he's got one that he kind of humps a bit um or he picks up anything then i will immediately put that in the wash i wouldn't let him go and lie down and put his face on a cushion or anything before i had wiped his muzzle i literally stand like supervising him you know um, so there is a lot of hygiene that goes with it but that is essential because we don't want him to get a bacterial infection now we can get another infection from drinking stagnant water so we've got to keep an eye on that as well but with the food you know we can eat raw beef we can eat raw duck so that's it's less of a risk and with all the hygiene i'm doing i think the quality of life that he's got on this raw food is worth that small risk of bacterial infection which like i said he he hasn't to our knowledge ever got from from the food first one was from stagnant water the second one was something that was just going around 
and so it, it definitely wasn't raw food because a lot a lot of dogs had it and not dogs that were particularly raw fed you know um, it started in Newcastle and then came up to Edinburgh and was obviously something in the environment um I noted down here some of the things that we had tried I had tried all sorts of supplements and these have worked for some people but not for us we tried slippery elm we tried psyllium husk um all the hills zd food which was he, he liked but it didn't actually make him better i tried raw kefir um i tried my own probiotics steroids like i say metrobactin is an antibiotic that works for tummy problems we tried that um that did help but only ever temporarily and there's not they shouldn't be on it long term because it's going to mess with the gut flora and that's what you want to balance you know um he's on apoquil for allergies which is something else that's sometimes tried with dogs and that he would have had to stop if he went on the cyclosporin but that didn't work probably a, a million and one other things that you might suggest and i'll say well actually we tried that we tried that i'm so happy with where we're at the other thing we've done is we've simplified his diet so for the time he was on the the hypoallergenic foods we excluded all treats and i only made these baked wet food treats but you guys know if you follow me i do a lot of enrichment with watson we clean his teeth which means he gets um toothpaste which has got other stuff in it and we give him a treat afterwards for having his teeth cleaned we use an electric toothbrush um and i do enrichment games with him so we don't mind that he has a little bit of treats but we've worked out that with inflammatory bowel disease it needs to be low fat um, low fat is, is good for Watson, not high fiber. Some dogs do better on high fiber, but not all. Um, so low fat, not necessarily low protein, but again, some dogs do better on low protein. So his, his raw food is lean, um, so it's low fat, but the treats we give him are, he has a couple of slices of pork um, loin that I get from Asda. He has them cut up and put into his enrichment treats if I haven't had time to bake some wet food and he seems fine with those. We also give him pure duck fillets um, and he seems to be okay with those. You know, as long as we make sure that it's a low fat item, low fat being less than 10%. So we went through all of the treats we have, all of the different kibbles we have, because I sometimes use kibbles as treats and threw everything out or gave away actually to the, the dog and cat home um, that was that was not low fat. So I think that's everything to tell you. Um, I know this was a long video of just, you know, a talking head, but I know that a lot of dogs suffer from this and I'm not saying that doing it exactly the way I'm doing it will necessarily work for you, but it may do. Um, and if you want to try raw food, I would highly, highly recommend it. And the way you can do it, and it's a little bit less gruesome and a little bit more hygienic is in pets at home you can get the raw chunks that's what Watson started on the nature's menu just the chunks um, and they do them in different flavors you know so you can hopefully find something that your dog likes and then you just put it in the freezer take the chunks out you want into his bowl cover it with a bit of foil stick it in the fridge we've made sure he's got his own shelf in the fridge that's at the bottom um, and then that's it give it to them you know make sure you wipe their muzzle afterwards unless they're a dog with without you know Watson's got a big old muzzle he's a labradoodle so we do need to make sure we clean his muzzle afterwards um yeah but like I said it doesn't mean that everything I've tried will work for you but it might and you might have had the same journey as me and it is heartbreaking I have had so many tears over Watson's health I can't tell you and like I said he is the healthiest ever five and a half years later probably twenty thousand pound or more we've spent a lot of it we've got back in insurance some of it we haven't we reached our limit a lot of the time but we're finally there we finally know what's wrong with him and we found a solution and you know we can manage it like i said there will be flare-ups he had that little he had a vomiting session last week but it, he ate some grass he threw it up and then he was fine so um yeah i'm happy and i i hope that we i expect there will be flare-ups What the vet has told us the sort of criteria is is that if a dog can go three months without having a flare-up that is easily solved then he'll need to go on cyclosporin so if watson can go for the next three months and every time he has a flare-up if we give him probiotics and he there was more to it than that actually and he he starts to resolve in a couple of days then we don't need to consider cyclosporin but it's also if he's sick more than twice a day we have to give him a serenia tablet to stop him being sick and if he goes off his food if he goes off his food and after a couple of days is not starting to eat again or is still being sick or or the probiotics have not stopped the diarrhea at all then he would go on to cyclosporin but if he can go for three months 
it's not go for three months and not have a flare up but if he can go for three months and have a flare up that is manageable and that doesn't stop him eating for too long or it doesn't result in vomiting for too long then he won't need to go on cyclosporin so that's our hope that's our goal that's what we're going to try and continue to achieve you know um so I'm hopeful, cautiously optimistic, delighted at how much he is enjoying going with his pack. Like when he goes with the walker, we get photos and videos and all sorts from her. And he's just having the time of his life running in and out of the river, playing with his friends. Not something that I could offer him, you know, if we go out for a walk every day. It's just he loves being with his big pack of dogs, you know, and I just love how much he's enjoying life. And even little things we've noticed when you know, when we go saying we're going for a walk, he's doing this little dance of joy, which he never really used to do. There was just, he obviously just didn't feel well, you know, so this is just fantastic. So I hope that this has been helpful. I'll try and list everything or link anything that I think has been helpful, but I think the things that have been helpful, like the Cyber mix, I will link that. But Serenia is something to ask your doc, uh, vet for, not doctor. Um, but they, they are quite reluctant to give it. Um, you know, they would only give it when you get to a, a certain point of education and you know how to use it and that, that they're satisfied that you're not going to like give your dog junk food and then give it a Serenia to stop it being sick, that kind of thing. Um, and I'll, But I'll list everything in the description that we have tried that has had any success and hopefully that will help you. And I'll list some other things that, that we tried that didn't have success but that might work for you um i'd love to hear your experiences where you are in the journey and you know if i can help at all but can i just say because whenever whenever i've done these type of videos before talking about his issues inevitably somebody will will leave a comment saying my dog won't eat and is vom vomiting and, and has diarrhea what should i do take your dog to the vet like i'm not a vet i can't tell you what's wrong with your dog you need to get them seen by a vet they could have anything they could have a twisted stomach that can kill them very quickly they could have some kind of worms they could have anything and it could be something extremely serious so if your dog is vomiting has gone off its food has diarrhea you need to take it to the vet and you need to get it seen and that's the only way to figure out exactly what's wrong with it if you think it's taken us you know five years to get to this point and thousands and thousands of pounds i'm not saying that would happen to you but you need at least a visit to the vet to rule out anything else serious um you know we didn't have to have this endoscopy because it hasn't changed things other than to give us a diagnosis but we're happy that we've gone through it and that we know for sure what it is um, but yeah i'm happy to answer any questions thank you so much for watching i'll speak to you again soon